Mag, math, mag, math, let's do some math today. So this is chapter 11 and we're looking at the last chapter of mechanics and we're looking at variable acceleration in this AS mechanics uh, set of lessons. Okay, so this is the first lesson. It's actually the only proper lesson I'm doing on this. I'm going to do the whole chapter just in one explanation for you because it's, it's a fairly straightforward concept. Um, we're going to be talking about not the SUVAT equations that we have here, the, this velocity time graph that I've drawn where we get constant acceleration. That there is where we get all of our SUVAT equations for, from if you, if you watch my video on the SUVAT equations. We're going to be looking at what happens when acceleration is variable. In other words, it, it increases or it decreases. We're going to get velocity time graphs that look like this, you know, with, with curves, okay? Um, but the principles of what, how we're going to find, you know, or switch between displacement, velocity and acceleration, the, the principles are the same whether the functions look like this or the functions are the straight lines. The only thing that's different is you can't use the SUVAT equations with these. You can't use Newton's SUVAT equations. Okay, so we'll come on to those in a minute because that's what this chapter is about. But we're going to go back to, and just look for a second at our uh, our SUVAT equations and look at this. This is a velocity time graph, straight line, so it's constant acceleration. Acceleration we know is the change in velocity uh, with time. And applying y equals mx plus c to this, this line, well our c value is our u, our initial velocity, isn't it? And the gradient, of course, is the acceleration. So we get from this v equals u plus at, don't we? And that's explained in, in the other lessons, the SUVAT lessons. If we, f the gradient of this line is the acceleration, isn't it? Okay, and the acceleration, of course, is the change in velocity with time. So it's dv by dt, the gradient of the line is dv by dt. Okay, change in velocity over time. And of, you know, indeed, if we differentiate this, you can see the num u is just a number, so that just goes, uh, and the t goes, so it just leaves you with the acceleration when we, dif when we differentiate this. Okay, um, we also know that the area under the these were trapeziums, weren't they? The ones that we were looking at, or sort of pentagons or whatever. Um, the area under the these graphs, these velocity time graphs, is also the displacement, the you know the distance travelled. Um, and we can we know from a function of y equals mx plus if we integrate any function, we can find the area you know underneath. Well. If we integrated this, okay, with respect to t, okay, then that number u would become ut, wouldn't it? And this add one to the power, so you get t squared, and divide by the new power, okay. Well, divide by two is a half, okay. Recognize that, of course you do. It's that equation, isn't it? S equals ut plus a half at squared. So this now is the order going down if we differentiate from here if we differentiate this function okay then we get the change in displacement with time is actually the velocity and if we differentiate again the change in velocity with time is actually the acceleration it's also we could describe that as ds d2s over d t squared can't we the second differential of this okay so to summarize we have the displacement if we differentiate we get the velocity and if we differentiate again we will get the acceleration so this is our differentiating okay so differentiating going down and going that way if we start off with acceleration we integrate to go up and that's all you need to remember that order s v a and we start at a you can integrate to get the velocity and you can integrate velocity to get the displacement now the only difference with this chapter is that these uh, 
equations that we have for acceleration and velocity and, mm -hmm. and displacement are not going to be the, the Newton ones. So they're going to be different functions, but they will integrate up and they, they will um, differentiate down and you can just switch between. So if you've got a, a function for the velocity, it won't look like that. It's not a constant, uh, it's not constant acceleration. So it may be, you know, in terms of, you know, something like that. Um, in terms of time, we're, this a function here that gives you the velocity at a particular time, if we integrate that between two limits, we know we've got the uh, we've got the acceleration. You know, we've got the displacement, and if we differentiate, if we differentiate down, okay, then we've got the acceleration. We've got to put a, a particular time in because that acceleration is changing. Okay. Likewise, then. Now that we're not, we've got not got nice straight lines here anymore when we're going to be doing this, of course, when you integrate up, you're going to get that constant on the end. So you're going to need, you know, a, a particular velocity at a particular time or whatever. You're going to need that coordinate to stick in to find, to find out what that missing constant is as we do that. You know, when we integrate up, we put a plus C on the end, don't we? So you're going to need some more information. They're going to give us that, you know, in the exercises. Okay. So this is what you've got to remember, okay? So moving away from Newton's uh, equations of motion, the, the principle stays true. But if we start with displacement and we differentiate, we get velocity. If we differentiate again, that function, we get the acceleration. If we start off with a, an equation that's an acceleration, equation for acceleration, if we integrate that, we've immediately got an equation that will give us our velocity. And if we integrate that, we've immediately got an equation that will give us our displacement. Sorry, that's probably another couple of subscribers. OK. And of course, when we're doing this, um, we've got to, um, I can't remember what we've got to, I can't remember what I was going to say then because me, me phone has sort of put me off. But what I will say is remember that Again, if I do it down here, we've got S, V and A. A way of describing the velocity okay, is also dS by dt, the change in displacement with time. And a way of describing the acceleration is the change in velocity with time. It's also this differentiated again, so it's d2s over dt squared. So you need to know that, okay? That velocity can be described with a v or as ds ds by dt. That acceleration can be described. Oh, someone's put the printer on. That's next to me. That acceleration can be described as a or db by dt or d2s over dt squared. Okay, it's driving me mad. I've had a fly in the room. Your phone's going, and now someone's put the printer on. Okay, so have a go at the questions in chapter eleven. And oh, uh, and um, yeah, and I'll go through some of the exercises with you. Okay, thank you.